All right, let's talk about counties. Counties are another local government entity. If you recall way back when we first started and we were talking about the constitutions of Texas, we mentioned, or I mentioned, that a lot of responsibility was shoved down to counties. So they have, the state of Texas has decentralized a lot of work and, uh, and a lot of responsibility. For instance, the Secretary of State is in charge of elections, but counties run the elections. There is some entity in the county, usually the tax assessor, which makes absolutely no sense, or the clerk, um, that runs elections. And the commissioner's court oversees it, and then they send all the information back to the Secretary of State who houses all of the information. So there are 254 counties in Texas, and they are responsible for a lot of administrative work that the, the state not only doesn't pay for, the state doesn't staff. Now, this is the thing about counties. They do not have, there's no such thing as a home rule county. Counties do not have any flexibility, none. The, the, the structure of a county, uh, like Loving County has, what, 131 people? And Harris County has 5 million people or more. They both have the same structure. They get their name and their marching orders from the state. This is the structure of a county. Period. There are, there's a county judge and there are four county commissioners. There's a county judge and four county commissioners in Loving County with 131 people. There's a county judge and four county commissioners in Harris County. There's a county judge and four county commissioners in Tarrant County. They all have the same structure. If counties want to deviate from the county structure, like they want to have a different, have a special entity like a hospital, or they want to eliminate an obsolete position like counties used to have to have a, a blacksmith. Well, at, at some point, counties didn't need blacksmiths, but the only way that you can change something in your county structure is to get permission from the state. And they do that one of two ways. One, they will pass a statute that specifically says Harris County can do X, Y, and Z. Or they will write up a proposal and put it out and we have to vote on it like a constitutional amendment. I distinctly remember voting on the closing of a hospital district or a hospital in Hidalgo County. And so... It is one of the reasons that the Texas Constitution is so long because some of the things that are in there, some of the amendments are in there, are very specific about specific counties. So what are counties responsible for? They're responsible for any land that is outside of city limits. So they're responsible for county roads. They're responsible for county bridges. They are responsible for law enforcement, and they are responsible for allocating money within their county. And remember that there are going to be several cities within counties. Counties are not, they have to coordinate with cities because they are not technically over the cities. So there are 
several county officials in uh, that are required by the Constitution to be elected. And all of these except one are elected in partisan elections. You have to say if you're running as a Democrat or a Republican, you have to, or Green Party or Libertarian, you have to get the nomination from your party. If you're a Democrat or Republican, that means that you have to win the primary. If you are a Libertarian or Green Party, that means that you have to get the nomination at your convention, your state convention. So we're going to talk about some of the required positions within counties. Now, we already talked about five of them. The county judge, it's one person, county judge. They really don't, especially in larger counties, they don't have very many judicial responsibilities. Their responsibility is running the county and making decisions. Like the county judge in in El Paso County made a decision to shut down the county because they've been having so many issues with with COVID um, flaring up and with morbidity being so high. So the county judge decided that they were going to shut down El Paso County and then he got sued and then they said he couldn't do that. Um, the county judge in Harris County made a decision that they were going to allow people to mobile vote. So a, a poll worker would actually come to your car and you would be able to vote without actually having to go into a business. So they make decisions for the people in their county and vote on them. So let's talk about some of the other, some of the other positions. So we'll talk about the county treasurer. The county treasurer's job is to collect county taxes and to manage, where is it? To manage the money that comes from to manage the money in the county, to work with the work with the commissioner's court and to make decisions and to help them to distribute the money. Now, the county treasurer is an elected position. Um, there are some counties that have said this is too important a position to leave up to chance. We need someone that is qualified, that has uh, certifications, that is able to actually do accounting and accounting principles. And so some counties have acquired the ability, the, the permission to instead of elect a county treasurer, they hire merit-based county auditors. So a county is either going to have a treasurer or an auditor uh, who is a financial officer that is in charge of all of the county records and making sure that expenditures are spent or made correctly and um and but you have to get permission and there's either going to be a statute a law or a constitutional amendment that says that your county can have a county auditor somebody hired kind of like a, a city manager all right, let's talk about the tax assessor, collector. You would think that the tax assessor assesses taxes. The tax assessor does not. The tax assessor collects taxes, including um, sales tax and property taxes. Um, but there is this central location, one company that is hired that decides what the property value is and um, sends that to everyone for city, for county, for special districts, all of it. The valuation is done by a separate entity. The tax assessor's office registers voters. The tax assessor's office collects more motor vehicle registration fees. When you go to get your tags, um, then, or when you go, when you 
purchase a car and you are having to get pay all those extra little taxes that is through somebody that is employed by the tax assessor's office so those are responsibilities and most of those funds really all of this except uh property tax is something that they're doing for the state registering voters that's secretary of state's job but they pass it down to the tax assessor's office. Motor vehicle registration and sales tax, that goes to the state. That money comes to the state. But they have to hire people. They have to take it out of their budget and pay people to do this job. Every county has to have a constable and a sheriff. We'll start with the sheriff. So the sheriff is an elected position. They're elected in partisan elections. They, they have four-year terms. Um, and their official job description is that they are the chief law enforcement officer. Usually sheriffs will have several deputies. So you have the elected person. And then you have the people that are actually out doing the work and what work are they doing they're patrolling the streets in the county so if it's not in the city limits if it's county land and there's a road out there the sheriff is the one that would give you a ticket if there is a moving violation and then you would go to the justice of the peace to deal with that ticket they are also in charge of the county jails in every county and sheriffs can um usually they don't, don't do it very often but they can also deliver court orders so you pay a fee and they like if you got divorced and um say you had a default divorce where where you didn't show up and they needed to show you that you're divorced and this is what you have to do the sheriff's office would bring it to you and serve you with that all right let's talk about the constable the constable is not primarily responsible for law enforcement although sometimes they do assist especially smaller counties they assist the sheriff's office in law enforcement duties but their primary job is serving Serving notices, like you have to come to court, you've been sued. Serving eviction notices, you haven't paid your rent, and so the landlord is trying to take the property. They serve arrest warrants. And in addition to the serving, um, let's say that you got an eviction notice, and you went to court, and you lost. So they tell you, you have to get out. So they there's going to be a kickout order that says you have to be out by this day. Who's going to bring that to you? The constable's office. Say that the day that is on the kickout notice comes and goes and you are still in the property. Have you ever seen people's all people's property out on the lawn somewhere? You know who goes into the home? <laughs> and moves the property out for them the constable's office i honestly this is one of the hardest jobs in the county because when you see the constable coming they just always have bad news <laughs> i would imagine that it would be very hard to be the constable it's like what where where you where's he going where 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 is he going or she where's she going uh because they bring they bring the heartache Let's talk about the district clerk and the county clerk. So in off in locations that have district courts, there is a person that is in charge of keeping all of the records for the courts. And that person is called a district clerk. So this is where you go. You go to the district clerk's office to file a lawsuit in district court. You go to the district clerk's office to get a certified copy of the of any court order that came out of district court. 
So you have district courts in counties that have more than 8,000 people. Then you also have county courts. And so there is a clerk for that. There's a county clerk. And that person keeps all of the records of the county courts and keeps all records in general for people in the county. Marriage licenses this is where you go to get your marriage license. This is where you go to get an assumed name certificate if you're starting a business but you're not incorporating. Or even if you are incorporating, you want to also get permission to use that name in your county. You go to the to the county clerk's office. You want a death cert a copy of a death certificate. You go to the county clerk's office. Any and so all of that is housed and property records, deed records are, are housed at the county clerk's office. So we have the district clerk. If you have a district court and you have a county that has district courts, then the district clerk keeps all of those records for the courts. The county clerk not only keeps records for the county courts, they also keep all the other records. County clerk. Every county has either a county attorney or a district attorney. The distinction is the same. 8,000 people, you have districts or more, you have districts. If you have less than 8,000 people in the court, in the county, then you're going to have a county, you're going to have county attorneys. So the district attorney is an elected position. They are elected in partisan elections. They serve four-year terms, but their job is to be the county's chief legal officer. The most visible part of county attorneys and district attorney's job is to prosecute criminal cases. They are in charge of deciding if some if charges are going to be brought. Um, they usually have several assistants. They're called assistant district attorneys or assistant county attorneys. District attorneys very rarely go to jail. I mean, go to court. <laughs> they very rarely go to jail either. But they very rarely go to court. They usually are making decisions. They are announcing what's going to happen. And if it's a big, huge, high-profile case, every now and then they will try the case. But most of the time, the district attorney is, is sitting in an office making decisions. And the assistants are the ones that are actually going to court. County attorneys and district attorneys also handle some civil matters for the county. So they do litigation and usually and they have civil divisions. So remember criminal is where someone has broken the law or a company has broken the law and they are being they are seeking to punish them or seek justice. And civil is where there is a dispute between two entities and you're looking to settle it or make things right. That's the, the big difference. Every county has at least one justice of the peace. Counties can have up to eight justices of the peace. Uh, so they break the county into precincts. The precincts match the precincts that the constables cover. And they remember justices of the peace do a myriad of things. They marry people, they do arraignments, they do tickets for people that uh, got tickets in the count on county property. They do small claims. So justice of the peace also also if the county doesn't have a a coroner, the justice of the peace actually declare signs death certificates, declare someone passed away and signs death certificates. So it is another elected position. These people are usually paid pretty well. County clerk, county commissioners 
usually make somewhere around $150,000, $160,000 a year. Uh, the same for justices of the peace. Sheriffs are somewhere in there, usually maybe a little bit less. Um, but county positions are, you usually make pretty good money. Now, these are the issues that counties experience. There is not a lot of flexibility in the Constitution. Like I told you before, same rules for, for Harris County as it is for Milam County, where I came from, as it is for Loving County out in West Texas with you know, mom, pop, and Joe, and that's all that lives there. So it is very difficult to make changes, to customize county work, and it makes it very difficult for the people that work, the uh, people that are elected and whose job it is to run the counties. They also, because you have to elect all those people, sometimes up to eight district court district court judges, eight criminal judges, eight district court civil judges, eight county court judge civil judges, eight <laughs> uh, county court criminal judges, family law judges juvenile court judges, justices of the peace, the sheriff, the constable, the, the county assessor, the county clerk, the district clerk, the district attorney, and I probably left something out. All of those are on the same ballot at the same time. Uh, and so there have been a lot of people that have been asking, can we elect the people from the, the county level officials at different times so that it's not so overwhelming. When you have county elections, that ballot is long, and we no longer have straight ticket voting. So you have to, to have a valid ballot, you technically are supposed to go and vote for every individual office. Now, sometimes people don't, that doesn't make their ballot invalid. That just means that some people don't, don't get voted on. If your, your office is at the end of the ballot, sometimes people don't even make it down that far. They are in charge of the uh, road system. And oftentimes they uh, don't have enough money. So it makes it, um, really difficult and so if you've ever seen like farm to market road fm 408 fm 1187 uh that's a farm to market road and that is county property the the road is maintained by the county and they are responsible for uh maintaining it and oftentimes it runs into cities or sometimes they run into interstate highways which are federal so it it makes it difficult to maintain all those little roads with the budgets that they have another big issue with counties is that there are no rules in the the constitution that say that you can only hire people that are qualified for the job that is called the merit system so a civil servant like on the federal level you if you are applying to be a typist to work for the irs then they're going to give you a test to make sure that you can type the, a certain amount of words if you were going to work for the IRS, you're going to have to have a degree in certain things. So it is merit. No such thing in counties. So it is very easy and it is very common for county jobs to go to friends, relatives, and supporters of county officials. Does that mean that they are the most qualified person? No, <laughs> it does not. Um, 
And so sometimes you see that people do not have the capacity to do the jobs that they have been hired for um, and that those jobs are hard to get because you have to know somebody to be able to get the job. They pay well. They get a lot of holidays. Um, some of them are harder than others. Should you work for the county clerk's office, there's people coming in all times of the day. They need a whole bunch of different things, and you have to master all of those different things. Um, you work for the, the clerk, a district clerk or a county uh, district clerk, then you have to manage all those all those cases and you have to make sure that they're right and you have to know some legal terms because people are going to be asking you stuff and so it can get um it can get complicated and so it would be helpful with all of that information if the people that were marshalling the information were experts in their fields but that is not common there have been some calls to merge county government with other local governments uh, to just basically eliminate county governments so that you would have a single local government. But the way that our system is set up, the state is so dependent on county governments. I don't know how, how you would do that. And they do have separate budgets. So mm, there there have been calls, but I don't know how you how it would logistically work in Texas. We've just become too dependent on our counties. So this picture is showing a county courthouse. The, they, they almost all look the same, heck. Um the Tarrant County Courthouse looks the same as El Paso County Courthouse. Um, I don't know what this is with people in kilts, but um, they are in charge of budgets, making decisions, records, courts, law enforcement. All of that is our county responsibilities. All right, let's talk about special districts. So a special district is a local government entity that is separate from counties. It is separate from cities. They are self-contained and they operate just like counties. Like counties get property taxes. That's that's the primary way that they get funding. They can also apply for, for grants from the federal government. And uh, in, in some counties can get sales tax as revenue. Um, the same is true of special districts. Special districts separate from county government and municipal government, they have a very specific duty and they can collect taxes on in their own right. So some of the examples that they gave us was airport authorities, hospital authorities, like JPS is a district, municipal utility districts, um, Trinity Metro is a special district. They are separate. Um, hey, Tarrant County College District, TCCD. They, so they have an elected board. They collect taxes, property taxes, and uh, can they can get grants. And they run themselves with the elected officials of that special district. There are several and they're and counting um, because more and more districts want to separate or it, entities want to separate so that they can collect and control their own pots of money. And don't forget, we're not going to talk about them right now, but don't forget that ISD stands for Independent School District. So school districts 
and we that's the way that we run our school system in Texas. They are independent entities that have boards. They are self-contained. They run themselves and they collect taxes. So they provide a single service. If we are looking at the number of special districts, they have been on the rise. They are, have become a lot more popular. The, it is just very popular because JPS used to be a county hospital. It is now a separate special district with a board. And they're one of the entities that you can watch. They, they always have their meetings online so you can watch them for assignment three and write your paper and get the agenda of the of the, the meeting that you watch you can also watch a tarrant county college district meeting and get their agenda arlington city council um i know that they always have their stuff available um i'm trying to think of the ones that I know have a a well developed online watching uh Fort Worth City Council also has very well developed you can see the agendas you can see the you can watch the meetings they record them so y'all go get in there and and watch your special you watch your uh local government meeting not court it is cities counties special districts those are your choices. Uh, you can look at like a committee meeting that like a, a, a city committee meeting. You can watch a school district meeting. And so all of those are available. And um, of the three types of entities, special districts are the most numerous. Now, these are the issues. Because they are smaller, they are not able to buy things in bulk um and their the tax rate is usually pretty low so they are always working with limited revenue they are always working with limited bargaining power because they are smaller it it i mean gosh you can you're competing with uh cities and counties um that you just don't have as much bargaining power and um they have to fight with counties and cities uh to be able to collect sales tax because remember that sales tax the state is going to get 6.25 percent of a maximum of 8.25 percent so cities like arlington doesn't share with any special districts fort worth does share with special districts but uh arlington wants the money they want all the money <laughs> for themselves and so it is difficult to wrestle away a percentage of sales tax for a special district Sometimes it is their areas that they serve are very small. And a lot of times the demand for the service extends beyond a, a single jurisdiction. But special districts can issue revenue bonds. Um, they and you will see bond elections all the time i remember oh this has been oh about eight nine years ago now uh crowley school district decided that they were going they wanted to build some new schools and so they put out a bond request to build some new intermediate schools and um the bond was approved so they built these schools they were beautiful intermediate schools but one of the things that they had not figured into the bond was um the cost of <laughs> hiring people uh and staffing the schools 
So once they realized their mistake, they did another bond request. We now we gotta we gotta uh, hire all these extra teachers to teach in these new schools. And it was at a time of recession, and they didn't do a really good job of explaining what was going on. And the people of Crowley that were in the Crowley ISD did not approve it. So for a couple of years, those beautiful schools just sat empty because they didn't have the money to pay the staff and the teachers and the utilities for the schools. Uh, oops. So uh, I'll never forget that. When I used to um, substitute teach, because I really thought for a while that I wanted to teach in, in secondary school. Um, yeah, that I, that eventually left me. But um, I would teach in, the, they, in those beautiful schools. Mansfield did a bond election, and they got some new schools as well. So Tarver Rendon finally got a new school. That school was old. Uh, but they finally got bond money and built a new school out in Rendon. So sometimes there is a need because uh, to coordinate overlapping jurisdictions. Certainly there are roads that are county roads and then they eventually become city roads. What if it needs to be repaired? The question is, Who's going to pay for it? Uh, wouldn't it be cheaper to get one bid um, and we decide who's going to pay how much for uh, one company to fix the county part and the city part of the road? It, school districts, good heavens. Um, I'll just use Mansfield ISD as an example. Um, there are some schools in Mansfield School District that are in the city of Arlington. I believe that there is a Mansfield School District school that is in the city of Kennedale. So there's going to be all kinds of coordination that has to go on when you're deciding who's going to respond if you have a, a law enforcement emergency. Uh, who is going to transport a, a child to what hospital if that is needed or to uh, to take them down to uh, the Kimbo Road if they need to go if they need to go to juvenile. Um, so there is a lot of coordination that has to happen, a lot of information sharing that needs to happen. It makes no sense for a city, and a county to bid on the same grant, why don't they get together and write the grant together um, and then decide how they're going to split up the resources if the grant is accepted. So those are the kinds of things that councils of governments do. They help the different special, the different local government entities coordinate, share information, they do some joint law enforcement training as well. All of that is um, count is councils of government. So that is the end of chapter 11. We have talked about municipalities, we've talked about counties, and we've talked about special districts.